on World News Tonight. Parliamentary pressure. Rishi Sunak put on the spot for the first time as UK's Prime Minister. Tonight, more on the calls for a general election. Nuclear threats. Russian President Putin oversees nuclear drills as Russia pushes unproven dirty bomb allegations against Ukraine. Trouble Twitter. Most active Twitter users are losing interest. Is this a challenge for Elon Musk? Find out tonight. And Fashion for All. Mexico extends their runway with a big heart to all differently abled individuals. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Our top story tonight still leads in the United Kingdom as UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has faced the opposition in the House of Commons for the first time since taking office, seeking to provide assurances that his new government will offer economic stability and continuity after his predecessor's tax-cutting plans triggered market turmoil. The UK's new Prime Minister has faced calls for a general election just two days into the job. After a first full meeting of his cabinet, Rishi Sunak appeared in Parliament for his inaugural battle with the opposition leader. As Sunak came to power through an internal Conservative Party election, Keir Starmer said he should allow the general public to have their say. Even his own side know he's not on the side of working people. That's why the only time he ran in a competitive election, he got trounced by the former Prime Minister. So why doesn't he put it to the test, let working people have their say and call a general election? However, Sunak insisted that he does have a mandate, inherited from his party's election victory in 2019. Our mandate is based on a manifesto that we were elected on to remind him an election that we won and they lost. A mandate that says we want a stronger NHS, better schools, safer streets, control of our borders and levelling up. That is the mandate that I and this government will deliver for the British people. After months of chaos within the Conservatives, Sunak's first challenge is to bring unity and stability to his party. To work he will quickly have to convince voters to re-elect him in two years' time. Vladimir Putin has overseen annual exercises by Russia's strategic nuclear forces at a time of heightening tensions with the West over his eight-month-long war in Ukraine. Ballistic and cruise missiles were launched from the Arctic to Russia's Far East. Russian President Vladimir Putin has remotely observed exercises by Russia's strategic nuclear forces for the first time since the invasion of Ukraine. The Kremlin says that the exercises are meant to simulate a response to a massive nuclear strike. Russian state television aired a video of Putin observing the drills via a large screen. In the broadcast, Moscow's defense chief explained the drills involved a nuclear submarine, long-range aircraft, as well as multiple practice launches of ballistic and cruise missiles. Comrade Supreme Commander-in-Chief, in accordance with the training plan for the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation, under your leadership, training is being conducted to oversee the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation, during which the tasks of delivering a massive nuclear strike by strategic offensive forces in response to an enemy nuclear strike will be worked out. The exercises follow Putin's warning about his readiness to use, quote, all means available to defend against attacks on Russia's territory in a clear reference to the country's nuclear arsenal. They also come as Russian officials have alleged for the past several days that Ukraine is planning to develop and use a so-called dirty bomb in its conflict with Moscow. Dirty bombs are conventional explosives combined with radioactive material designed to spread radioactivity that may lead to death and destruction. Ukraine, as well as the West, strongly deny the allegations, explaining that Russia is trying to make a pretext for a further escalation of the war. The U.S. was told about the drill under the terms of the New START arms treaty, under which Moscow must notify Washington of such missile launches.
National leaders, development experts and CEOs gathered in Berlin for a conference on what it hosts describes as a Marshall Plan to rebuild Ukraine. The conference will not involve concrete pledges of cash towards the estimated 750 billion euro construction cost, a task that hosts compared in the scale of United States Marshall Aid Program for rebuilding Europe after World War II. The German president, taking cover in an air raid shelter alongside residents of Koryakivka, northwest of Kyiv. A real insight, he said, into the conditions Ukrainian people are living under every day. As in Berlin, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz underlined the immense building process that lies ahead. The recovery, reconstruction and modernization of Ukraine will indeed be a challenge for generations, one that will require the combined strength of the entire international community. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shamal met with European leaders in the German capital as they discussed Ukraine's road to recovery, a task that's been likened to the Marshall Plan, an American-led initiative to reconstruct Europe after World War II. We're very much looking forward to your remarks. Attending the conference virtually, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky urged global leaders to cover the country's $38 billion budget hole, while the President of the European Commission gave a stark forecast for the cost of the damage done so far. The scale of destruction is staggering. The World Bank puts the cost of the damage at 350 billion euros. This is for sure more than one country or one union can provide alone. We need all hands on deck. Ursula von der Leyen announced last week that the EU aims to contribute 1.5 billion euros a month to Ukraine in 2023. Europe is hoping the international community will vouch for the rest. The International Monetary Fund estimates Ukraine will need around $3 billion a month next year to cover reconstruction costs which could rise as high as $5 billion a month if Russian bombing intensifies. The European Medicines Agency says a new wave of COVID-19 infections will hit Europe in the coming weeks as winter nears. The EMA held a press conference in the Netherlands where officials said the pandemic is not over and that the Omicron variant continues to mutate and therefore to cause concern. The European Medicines Agency says a new wave of COVID-19 infections will hit the continent in the coming weeks as we move towards winter. The EMA held a press conference where officials told reporters that the pandemic is not over and that the Omicron variant continues to mutate and therefore to cause concern. Last week, one of these new Omicron variants that is called BQ1 has been identified in at least five countries in the European Union and European Economic Area. According to the ECDC, BQ1 and its sublineage, which is called BQ1.1, will become the dominant strains by mid-November to the beginning of December. The EMA said it expected the new wave to begin within a week and added that the virus is evolving faster than the ability to supply adaptive vaccines, which are still in the early stages of development. The health officials also said that the influenza virus will be circulating at the same time as COVID this winter and that they recommend people in high-risk groups to get vaccinated against both. On a more optimistic note, the EMA said that current vaccines are still effective. The UN climate conference will be kicking off in the Egyptian resort town of Sharm el-Sheikh in under two weeks' time. Ahead of it, a new report has been released by the Lancet Medical Journal. It states extreme weather from climate change resulted in hunger for close to 100 million people. Lancet's latest report is a call to arms against climate change. The authors hope the evidence it presents shows a need for urgent action less than two weeks before nations meet at UN climate talks in Egypt. While the world is trying to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and responding to multiple coinciding disasters, recovery is hindered by the negative climate change impacts on health and its determinants, emphasizing the urgent need for action. The study includes the work of nearly 100 researchers across the globe. They highlight 43 indicators where climate change is impacting our health. Temperature records have been broken around the world in 2022. In the UK, temperatures passed 40 degrees Celsius for the first time ever in July. 
while other parts of Europe, Pakistan and China also experienced record heat. In praising the report, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres put it even more bluntly than the doctors. The climate crisis is killing us. It is undermining not just the health of our planet, but the health of people everywhere through toxic air pollution, diminishing food security, higher risks of infectious disease outbreaks, record extreme heat, drought, floods and more. Heated debates are expected at the COP27 talks in Egypt next month. Developing countries will expect nations that grew rich using fossil fuels to compensate for the damage climate change is causing. But wealthier nations are distracted by a war in Ukraine, a cost-of-living crisis and soaring inflation. Let's go into a short commercial break. More news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. The European Union and the North Macedonia signed an agreement on operational cooperation in border management with European Border and Coast Guard Agency Frontex. Strengthened operational cooperation between Western Balkans partners and Frontex will contribute in addressing irregular migration and further enhance security at the EU's external borders. A historic signature bridges the gap between Skopje and Brussels. The government of North Macedonia and the European Union have signed a cooperation agreement for border surveillance involving the EU's border agency Frontex. The president of the European Commission, who is on a four-day tour of the Balkans, hinted that North Macedonia's efforts to move closer to the EU family are bearing fruit. The negotiation process is gaining momentum and there's very good work being done. And finally, indeed, on your language, I promised to you that we would get the Frontex agreement signed, translated into the Macedonian language, no footnote, no asterisk, on equal footing with all the 24 languages of the European Union, and today we delivered. On her tour of the region, Ursula von der Leyen hopes to strengthen Frontex cooperation with the Western Balkans to improve security at the EU's external borders. Frontex already conducts joint operations with countries such as Albania, Montenegro and Serbia. However, it has been accused of allowing illegal pushbacks of migrants. Police opened fire on protesters in the hometown of Masa Amini where thousands had gathered 40 days after the 22-year-old died at the hands of morality police. Thousands pour into the streets to mark 40 days since the death of Masa Amini and the end of the traditional mourning period. These Iranians are heading from the city of Sakez in Kurdistan province, where the 22-year-old was from, to the cemetery where she was buried. On these videos posted on social media, mourners can be heard chanting anti-government slogans. Riot police were reportedly deployed in large numbers in Sakez in anticipation of fresh unrest. Internet access in the city has also been cut. Fresh protests have also taken place in a number of universities in Tehran and elsewhere in the country. Masa Amini was arrested by the morality police in Tehran on the 13th of September for wearing her hijab loosely. She fell into a coma after collapsing at a detention centre and died three days later. The news sparked fury. At her funeral, women ripped off their headscarves and burned them in solidarity. The protests quickly spread and have evolved into one of the most serious challenges to the Islamic Republic since the 1979 revolution. Security forces have fired live ammunition and tear gas to disperse demonstrations, killing over 200 people, including 29 children, since the protests erupted. That's according to rights groups. Many of Twitter's most active users abandoned the platform in recent years and have shown no sign of coming back, sparking serious concerns about Twitter's future just days before Elon Musk is slated to take control of it. As billionaire Elon Musk approaches a Friday deadline to close his $44 billion deal to buy Twitter, the social media company is losing its most active and important users. That's according to an internal Twitter document titled Where Did the Tweeters Go? 
in which a Twitter researcher wrote that so-called heavy tweeters have been in, quote, absolute decline. The internal document said a heavy tweeter is defined as someone who logs into Twitter six or seven days a week and tweets about three to four times a week. These heavy tweeters account for less than 10% of monthly overall users, but generate 90% of all tweets and half of global revenue. The research also found that cryptocurrency and not-safe-for-work content, which includes nudity and pornography, are now the highest-growing topics of interest among Twitter's most active English-speaking users, a shift over the past two years that could make the platform less attractive to advertisers. At the same time, interest in news, sports, and entertainment is waning among those users, topics that are most desirable to advertisers. The study said Twitter was motivated to investigate, quote, disturbing trends among users and better understand the decline in the company's most active users. When asked to comment on the internal findings, a Twitter spokesperson said, quote, we regularly conduct research on a wide variety of trends which evolve based on what's happening in the world. Our overall audience has continued to grow, reaching 238 million monetizable daily active users in the second quarter of this year. The study made no specific conclusions about why heavy users are declining, but a Twitter researcher wrote that these users are likely decamping to rival platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Italy's new far-right-led government of Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni has easily won the second of two required confidence votes in Parliament by a comfortable margin. The vote in the Senate was 115 in favour of a coalition government and 79 against, while there were five abstentions. No surprises on Wednesday as by 115 votes to 79, the Italian Senate comfortably endorsed the government programme of the ultra-right-wing Giorgia Meloni, leader of Brothers of Italy. Much like in her Tuesday speech in the lower house, Maloney wanted to distance herself from the image of an ultra-right winger nostalgic for fascism and close to Russia. She said, in Ukraine there is a war of aggression that we just cannot accept. I cannot accept it because I have always defended the principle of self-defense. Peace is achieved by supporting Ukraine, allowing Ukraine to defend itself, which is the only possibility we have for the parties in the field to decide to negotiate. This second and final confidence vote completes the constitutional requirements for forming a government, which will now see the first woman head of government in Italy's history take the reins. Welcome back to World News tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Goals by Bayern Munich scored a 3-0 win at already eliminated Barcelona as the German Giants clinched a spot in the Champions League round of 16 as group winners. Southeast Asian foreign ministers met in Jakarta to discuss how to restart a stalled peace process in military-ruled Myanmar. The meeting at the Secretariat of the ASEAN in the Indonesian capital will not be attended by any representatives from Myanmar. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern safely landed in Antarctica after her previous flight had to be aborted due to bad weather. Ardern's trip marks the 65th anniversary of Scott-based New Zealand's Antarctic Research Station. A U.S. Navy and Army blasted off a rocket from a seaside launch pad in Virginia to test nearly a dozen hypersonic weapon experiments to help develop the new class of weapons. K-pop stars BTS and Blackpink have been nominated for multiple awards at the People's Choice Awards. BTS are in contention for three awards while Blackpink scored two nominations for their hit Pink Venom. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight with visuals of two groups promoting diversity and inclusion in Mexico by hosting the second fashion show for people with disabilities to promote acceptance and removal of barriers that displays people's face in the country. Stay safe and have a good night.